Hi there everyone, my name is Kim Colling and I am from Newcastle in New South Wales. Something I'm really, really passionate about is budgeting. I'm quite surprised to have found that in many, many households, people just haven't been taught the basic budgeting skills, how to create budgets. And I know heaps of people have been read books like The Barefoot Investor, which a lot of my strategies are based on, but they haven't um, got that background skill to even build up that budget. So they love the concepts in there, but they struggle to put it into action. So I've been trying to do a series on how you can actually put that into action by just showing you a bit about what I do with the budget. So hopefully that can help you and add some value to your life where you can actually try and run your household budget a bit better. Um, hopefully my spreadsheet won't be too confusing for you. If you haven't seen episodes in one and two, please go back and watch those first so that it kind of puts us all into perspective because what I'm going to do with this one is jump straight into the spreadsheet showing you how I can you can build up your budget. What I just want to say before I forget is if you're getting any value out of this, please do me a favor and like my video here on YouTube. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you'd like a copy of the, of the spreadsheet, a free copy of my spreadsheet, feel free to, you need to do that. You need to subscribe and like my video. But if you can then email me or connect with me on Facebook and just may, tell me that you've done that and that you'd like a copy of the spreadsheet and I will get that off to you um, as is. And you can then use that and tweak it to your own liking um, to match your own circumstances and help your budget there. I'm also open to doing questions and answers. I'm going to probably do a Q&A session sometime after this. So if you've got any questions, once you've seen this video or any of the past videos, please just get them to me on Messenger or on email and I'll put them all together to do a Q&A session to kind of follow up and pull this whole series together. All right, so what I'm going to do first is share my screen. Just bear with me a minute while I do that and pull up my budget. So hopefully now what you can see is a big spreadsheet with lots of yellow on it, that's cool. What I've done in designing this is create, the yellow is the bit where you're gonna input your information as you build up this budget. So just starting off with the income stuff first, the, the complex bit is expensive, but let's start off with income. What you wanna do, we're all on different pay cycles. Some people get paid weekly, some get paid fortnightly, some monthly. There's a slot there, for a column for each different kind of way you get paid. So put in for parent one and parent two, what you earn. So in this example, I've put in parent one earns four and a half grand a month, parent two is earning $1,400 a fortnight. What you can see then is that kind of moves over to where I then formularize to annualize that, split it into monthly, fortnightly and weekly. Because that way you can look at your income and your expenses in the same, um, whichever kind of pay cycle you want to, to split out your expenses into different pools of money. So coming to the expenses, in the Barefoot Investor, if you've read that or if you've seen in my last training, um, which I encourage you to go back and watch that. The expenses typically get split up into four buckets in the Barefoot Investor. So he has four kind of overall buckets of money. One he calls the blow bucket, which is your everyday expenses, all your bills, your school sports, everything that you've got to pay just to kind of live. And the ideal there would be 60% of your income. Um, in your splurge, that's kind of your fun accounts, that's for social, it's for going out, it's for fun, having your hair done, kind of whatever you choose, but it's more of that instant fun stuff, the quick short term stuff. He reckons about 10% of your income. Um, your smile, that is your, your fun money. So that's your bit of longer term savings for things like a holiday, you know, things that make you smile. For me, it's like horse riding, saving for things where I can go and have some fun doing that. And then you have what he calls the fire extinguisher which is your long-term savings. It's the money that you use to pay off debts. It's the money you use to pay off your mortgage if you haven't got any debts to pay off. Um, it's kind of your, I call it my slush, it's kind of what's left at the end, but you wanna have about 20% of your money going into that because that's your how you get out of debt a lot quicker money. So you can see here on my spreadsheet, I've got your ideal amounts as I've built up, which you'll see how it ties into the actual in a bit. So I've kind of in there put that 60% of this person's income should go, should be their, their blow bucket. Now for me personally, and this I'll explain a bit in my last video, for me personally, just having one bucket of money for all those expenses, I personally don't like the way that works on its own. So I've actually set up a whole lot of sub accounts under that category. So I'm still aiming to have 60% of my income going into all those expenses, but I like to have a separate, a separate sort of bank account or bucket of money for my bills, a separate one for my everyday, which is like my groceries and fuel and stuff like that, a separate one for sports and music and school and pets. Because that way for me, I'm not going to be going, oh, yeah, there's heaps of money in this blow bucket. Let's go and buy more groceries when actually some of that needs to be saved for electricity and stuff. So you can kind of set up however you want. I really like having my bills bucket of money because that way when a bill comes, I'm like, yep, yeah, no problem. You know, Shane said to me the other day, I need new tires, no problem. It's in, the, it's in the bills bucket. In fact, if groceries are over and we don't have enough money for groceries, it's irrelevant because I've got the money there for the tires for the car in, in the bills bucket. So how you can build up your expenses. 
So that was just sort of the high level of the, of the four categories. The starting point really is the, all this yellow down the bottom here. So I've put in expenses that I think are fairly common to most households. If you get the spreadsheet, you can add in lines, you can add in categories, you can take things out that aren't applicable. But I try to just build up a basic budget for making up some numbers for an average family. So in this budget, I've put in that they pay a monthly mortgage payment of $1,500. Then moving into the bill section, you know, there's electricity, which typically is paid quarterly. I've put in 400 bucks a quarter. Rate is quarterly, I don't know, 500 bucks. Water is actually four monthly, which is just weird. Um, so I've put that one in there with a four monthly cycle, which is say $300 a, um, every four months. I've put in a, net, a random number of $100 a quarter for gas. House insurance, for me personally, I do it annually. So I've put in $800. You might do your house insurance the monthly payment. So then you'd fill it in the monthly section over there. You know, you could delete that, that one and put in, you know, 80 bucks a month for house insurance, you know, um, whatever works for you. I then put an internet monthly expense of say 50 bucks, your phones, your Netflix, private health, um, things like for car expenses, um, not fuel, but this will be your servicing, your rego, your tires, your repairs. I've just put in a random $2,000. Now you'll know with your own car or if you've got two cars, whether that should be 3,000, 5,000, 1,000, um, depending on the deal you have with your car. And then obviously there's vehicle insurance as well. Again, I've put in an annual amount of 500. Yours could be monthly, depending what you pay. Medical pharmacy is just a category I like to have in there so that I know that the odd doctor's visit and pharmacy bills and that are covered by my bills. So I like to put some money in there. So I've just put in $1,000 for this example. And then I've put in $1,000 for either because every now and again, there's another random bill kind of thing that turns up. Ah, oh, PO box, for instance. The other day, my PO box renewal was due. And I still put that in my bill. So I've got a bit extra in there for either. Part of my, that same blow bucket is my, what I call my everyday money. And for me, that's the bit that I let everyone, like Jane has access to, so you can have a look how much money's in there. That's our groceries. So I've put in there 250 bucks a week for groceries. I don't know what your budget is. Some people I know live on 200 bucks. I don't know how. Ours is more like 300. Other people talk to 350. So you put in what your grocery, average grocery spend is a week. Or maybe you shop monthly. Put in your monthly shop. Um, you could probably even put in, you know, you do a big shop for $500 a month, and then you do a you know, $150 weekly shop. And that'll add that all up into that annual column. You put in your fuel. So, you know, I'm just assuming one car a week, fill up one tank a week, 50 bucks a week. You might have a car that lasts a whole month and you put in a different amount there. I then put in sports and activities as well because I like to, again, budget for these things. I don't like to go, oh my goodness, the soccer bills do, I don't have the money. So I know that soccer is about 500 bucks a year and I know my daughter does music and I pay 35 bucks a week for her music. Let me just actually go back and increase pains here and keep the headings there. All right, so, you know, and in an ideal world, I might put in, you know, my son isn't doing anything at the moment, but I might put in there, you know, a sport for my son and I might put in 500 bucks for the year in case he decides he now wants to go and do something. So put in again whatever's applicable to your family. Um, school, for this example, I've assumed, say, a public school and I've just put $500 for fees. I know that often there aren't any fees, but there's always other costs. I've put in, say, $2,000 if you're using an after-school care, which a lot of us working parents have to use. And then I've just thrown a random $1,500 in there, which you would again think about and build up based on your school, your school uniforms, shoes. Um, so for me, that's covering uniforms, books, fundraisers, any other. So again, they come up with something from school, a camp, whatever. I know I've got money budgeted for that in school. I've put that under annual. You might be paying your school fees off monthly, which I currently do at the moment. So you might put it in as monthly. Just however you want to run your budget and set it up. It's just to make it easy to get an annualized figure. Uh, if you've got pets, I like to have a bucket for my pets because, again, when it's, oh, goodness, it's vaccination time, we need a vet bill, I want to know the money's there for it so that I'm not stressing about am I stealing that from the grocery budget or what budget am I stealing it from. The pets are there. They need to be fed every month and they have to go to the vet at least once a year for um, their regular vaccination. So I'm not talking about emergency things. That's what your mojo is for. And if you go back to episode one, that's where I talked about your mojo. So this isn't the emergency thing. This is just, I know they go for vaccinations and you know what your pets will cost you. I then break down, next thing I'm breaking down the splurge budget. So for me, splurge is kind of, you know, splurge of eating, eating out, coffees, restaurants, um, just random fun stuff, going to movies. I then feel that birthdays and Christmas is part of splurge. Now again, you can change this. You might think birthdays and Christmas is part of bills and you can tweak it accordingly. And clothes could be part of splurge. So in this example, I've just gone $1,000 for clothes. That's way too little. I think we need more clothes. But that's just, so you might break it up and go, well, there's two people in this family. There's 500 bucks each. You might go, that's just me. That's $1,000. Or you might go, 
I actually need $1,000 per person and put $4,000 in there if you're a four-person family. Put in what you need to. Um, I put in a bit of money for birthdays and Christmas. So in this example, I've gone $300 for each parent. Um, bit scabby maybe, but it is what it is. I've put in 500 bucks for each kid, assuming say a birthday party and a couple of presents and a thousand dollars for Christmas, probably too little. You probably need more than two grand for Christmas, but everyone's family is different. Put in the number that works for you. Um, I've then just assumed a weekly hundred bucks a week for, you know, takeout, coffees, restaurants, movies, that sort of fun stuff. And then for the purpose of the budget, started off just going, well, let's assume there's enough money. Cause remember, I haven't looked at how much money we've got versus how much we earn yet. I'm just building up a budget based on what, I guess round one is kind of what do we know we have to spend and what would we like to have for the rest? And then obviously we'll have to tweak it as we go a bit later. So let's actually say I put in $10,000 because I want to go and have a good holiday every year. So I'm putting in my wish list. And then your fire extinguisher is, um, so that was the holidays is actually falls into that smile fund. So there might be other things you put into smile. For me, I've just put holidays in there for now. And then your fire extinguisher, I've just said, well, let's say I could save $15,000 a year to pay off extra on my bills, get my debts down, or actually save. Maybe you're saving for a house, saving for a deposit, saving for an investment property, saving for a, I don't know, 50th cruise. That's me saving for that. Um, you pop that in. That kind of then breaks each of those up into annual, monthly, and fortnightly. And I've done that so that when you get to the point of actually allocating your wages each pay period into your different buckets of money, you can pick a relevant column and know how much you have to put in. But the first step is to have a look at, do we have enough income to meet all those expenses? So coming back up here to the income section, um, I've got $90,000 I've assumed in this case of after-tax income for this family. And it looks like my expenses are 91,400. So we have a little bit of a problem in that um, uh, $1,000 short. Now you could just go, all right, well, that'll come in overs and unders in bills because you know your electricity might be slightly under 500 bucks a quarter, maybe over. You might just leave it at that and go, that's what I'm doing. Or you can have a look at tweaking a few things. So looking at this, if I look at what my annualized blow bucket is, I'm looking at 57,000. Now, ideally on that income, it should only be 54,000. So my first thought would be, is there anything in the bill section I can cut? Now I'd go through this and go, you know what? There isn't because all of those expenses exist. I can't see how I could cut anything out of there. I'm not giving up private health. Uh, we could give up Netflix, but you know, that's only 180 bucks a year. So that's probably not gonna make a huge difference. So I might just go, well, you know what? We're gonna be slightly over in the percentage on blow bucket. And that is what it is. Hopefully as we get pay rises, and start paying off a mortgage, that'll come down. So we'll leave that one alone. Um, for the splurge budget, we're actually looking at 10% would be 9,000. We've got 8,000 in there, so we might go, all right, well, because we're over on bills, we might just leave that where it is. If you found you actually had some money left, you might go, you know what, I might up that social fund. Maybe we need a little bit more for, um, you know, for birthdays, Christmas, we might have to put in 2,000 for Christmas. Or you might go in, if you have put in two or 3,000, you might go, we need to cut that because we're still over. Then looking at smile, so savings for holidays. Okay, so I've put in 10,000 there. Obviously my budget's not working at the moment, so maybe I have to go down and go, well, let's actually go, let's save, you know, maybe eight grand for holidays. And we'll put that in there, that at least makes our budget work. We've now got a bit of change. We've got $960 left out of our annual money that we get in. And we can go, all right, so we're actually slightly under the 10% there, but we know that it's because we're over on bills. It's what it is. And then we should be saving you know, 20% to 18,000 in theory for fire extinguisher. In the case of this family, because of their bills, you know, the kids are in school, they have to use bush, they've got a mortgage, it's not possible. But a $15,000 savings a year is reasonable. So you can go in and tweak and play with your budget now, go and change different expenses and that to make it work. Um, we've got that extra $960, which you might just go, oh, we'll just keep that as spare, you know, for bills. So I hope that all makes sense to you. If not, rewatch it again. If you think it's too confusing, please do message me and I can do this again, hopefully a bit more simplified. I've tried to keep it as simple as I can. My brain's very, very analytical and this is kind of how I work. So pulling it kind of together then, so let's just say you, on a monthly basis, want to allocate money into different pools, buckets of money. So you might just look at this monthly column here and you go, all right, so on a monthly basis, we earn $7,500. Each month, I'm going to put $1,500 into the mortgage bucket. 1328 into the bills bucket. So you might round that to 1350. You're going to put 1366 into your everyday for your groceries, 193 into your sports, 333 into your school. You get, the, you get the picture. You put all these different things into your different bank accounts. 
I use ING. It's, he talks about it in the book. It's just an easy, it's an easy bank to have multiple savings accounts in and then you earn interest on every account, which is fantastic. And you literally can just see it on your phone um, which accounts have got money in. Um, what I've set up is that we all have, Shane and I have access to the every day in the splurge on the front screen of that app. So that way, if you want to go out for a coffee, you can have a look. Is there money in splurge? Can we go out for a coffee? Can we go out for dinner? Yes or no? So you kind of can then break that down into your monthly what you've got to put into each bucket. If you prefer to put it in every fortnight, you can go here and look at the fortnightly number. 692 per fortnight to go into your mortgage fund, 630 into bills. Now, by having all these different expense buckets of money, you can actually have a look then on your banking, whichever you choose to use, how much is in my bills account? Okay, good, I've got enough money to cover my bill. And really, if you start this and you're not starting behind the eight ball, you should always have enough money to pay your bills. If something significantly outside the square hits you, like for instance, I don't know, your car blows up and you have a major repair that's not budgeted for, that would come out of Mojo. As I mentioned, I talked about that in episode one, you want to have your mojo there so you go and you, well, your refrigerator blows up. You go and get yourself a new fridge. Then you use your fire extinguisher down the bottom. You use your 300 bucks a fortnight to go and pay back that fridge that you had to go and buy and build your mojo back up to $2,000. That way you don't stress when an emergency thing comes along and anything else that you've got in your budget that you know is coming, because we know electricity does turn up every quarter. It, it just is what it is. Your car rego every quarter. It's not a, it's, it's not a surprise. It shouldn't be a surprise if you've had any thoughts about budgeting. Um, you've always got that money to pay those bills and those expenses. So that's pretty much the spreadsheet in a nutshell. I'm going to stop sharing now and come back to looking at you. So, you know, so just what I want to say there is I hope that spreadsheets have some value to you by looking at that training. If you want to give me some feedback, I'd love some feedback because it's the first time I've actually trained on this spreadsheet. I developed it just for this program. And if you want a copy of that free spreadsheet, as I said, if you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my video, um, if you're on Facebook, maybe like my videos on there and share them if you're getting value out of them as well. And um, shoot me an email or connect with me on Facebook and let me know you've done that, you've subscribed and you've liked, and I will send you a copy of the spreadsheet for free. If you want me to take out all the columns and you say, I just want to see the fortnightly column, I can do that for you too. That'll take two seconds. And um, so I can send you one that actually works for you. So my email address is kim.a.colling at gmail.com. You'll find it in the commentary below as well. Or find me on Facebook under Kim Colling and um, connect with me. Let me know what you think. And as I said, I hope this has been of great value to you and I can help you with your budgeting. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day. Bye.